Hey everybody, it's Terry from the Drone Cav. First of all, I hope everybody's still doing well. You're staying inside, staying quarantined, being safe if you do go out, all that kind of stuff, and wishing everybody the best. Um, if you saw last week's show, we talked about uh, some technique, talked about doing some crane shots. So today, we're going to talk about something you know, kind of down the same road, but a little different. We're going to talk about flying sideways. Yeah, lots of different things there. And this is one of those things you do want to get some practice in with. Um, it sounds easy. It, it can, it, you know, you can do simple shots that are easy, but you do want to practice this because typically, especially if you're a new drone operator, you're used to getting out there and flying and mostly flying one direction, flying forward, because you can see what the camera sees on your controller. It kind of makes sense. It makes it simple. But when you're flying in other directions, you have different things going on. So you have to keep your eyes on the drone and your controller. So you're, you're multitasking there and doing some different things. So because, of course, your camera is not looking one direction or the other or backwards, which we're going to talk about in a later episode. And so there's a lot going on there. But uh, you might be familiar with a truck shot, which is a drone moving past a subject like a wall or a table with people sitting or it can be anything but the the camera just kind of moves past the object now I was wanting to do one thing today but just due to the logistics of being inside uh, not being able to kind of work out all the parameters you can also use a drone to lock onto a subject to kind of track a subject say go down um, the street next to a car following a car or a motorcycle something like that so you can do all kinds of these neat things but today we're just going to talk about kind of a simple truck shot just moving back and forth and we're going to look at it at a couple different altitudes we're going to look at it from like a ground level altitude maybe four or five six feet uh, above ground level then we're going to go up some pitch the camera down do the same shot to get a different perspective so there's a few things there to look at so again this is one of these things your creativity can really shine but the more practice you get flying a drone as a drone pilot, that really is going to lead into you being able to operate the camera in these more creative ways. So there's, again, tons and tons of stuff to learn. And if you've got the downtime, you've got a drone, you've got some room in your backyard or someplace to fly, good time to get out and practice. Okay, so let's go out there and do some flying. Okay, here we go. Let's get started. As always, um, we've started off doing our pre-flight inspection, removed the gimbal clamp off the uh, gimbal and camera to make sure that doesn't get bound up. And so let's take off here. We're in manual flight mode, meaning I'm flying doing the whole uh, process here. And so this is just a little orientation to get lined up for the shot. Now I mentioned flying backwards earlier. It's a little example of that. You can get some cool shots flying backwards too. Now I'm getting lined up here. You can see it's a little windy. You can see the palm leaves blowing around some in that planter. And so getting the camera angled a bit. It's kind of picking out how I want to do this shot. But this first shot, there's a couple things that may jump out, or at least one, one kind of big thing. So I'm going to let it go here for a second and see if that... Uh, jumps out to you. Okay, you may or may not have noticed, but that horizon line, or actual, actually the horizontal line of the bottom of the enclosure, it's really off there. So that may be the effect you're going for, which would be cool. But if not, if you're looking for a nice straight horizon or a nice straight horizontal line to follow, that's something you want to fly that path a couple times before going for your final shot or or it's part of your setup process. And again, I always call it the rehearsal flights. So we're going to come back. I'm going to make that adjustment. Now remember, you don't actually turn the camera on the drone. The gimbal does not rotate left or right. It does a little bit for correction, but you don't have control of that. The way you turn a camera left and right on the drone is to actually turn the drone. It's called yawing. It rotates on a vertical axis. So that's some things to get familiar with. Moving left and right and turning left and right are two different things when it comes to flying a drone and pointing the camera. Now notice how much better that horizontal line was in this shot. 
Now I came in a little close to the fence there, but that's okay because I was keeping the drone in what's called VLOS, Visual Line of Sight. So I know where the drone is at all times. You don't want the drone to fly out of your visual uh, line of sight. You don't want to see the drone. You want to know where it's at all the time because you may have to react. So it's, it's a tough thing. You get caught up in your shot and you don't pay attention to the where the drone is or what it's doing or what's near it or, or what's going on there. And just it's a good practice just to stay out of trouble. So now we're going to switch over and do something just a little different. And I, I was a little pinched for space here so I couldn't really do a, a real full-blown example but we're going to use dynamic track again kind of how we did in the crane episode last week now see what I'm trying to do there I'm trying to get to lock on that tiki torch um, it's a vertical straight skinny thing but this I wanted to do to point out that it's also important to not only pay attention to what's in your foreground but what's in the background what is right behind the subject you're trying to lock onto. In this case, you'll see that vertical upright of the enclosure is really close to that tiki torch. So it's throwing the software off. The software sees me trying to grab a vertical uh, sub or object for that, but it doesn't know. I can't say, hey, I want you to grab the tiki torch, not the vertical upright for the enclosure. Anyway, I did finally get it to lock on. Now let's take a look and see what happens. getting some drift and that's pretty obvious why because it wasn't sure which vertical I wanted to lock on they were too similar they were too close together so when you're planning your shot that's something to keep in mind if you do have uh, if you're going to use something like object lock to try to use it in a uh, an area where you have dissimilar items that they're not the same shape and, and all that so let's go up top a little higher here Now we're going to use object lock in a little different way here. And we're going to lock onto the hot tub. Now notice it's a nice big uh, square, nice contrast, so it really stands out there. Now, believe it or not, I'm just flying the right stick pushed all the way over to the right. Not all the way over because I'm controlling the speed, but you get the idea. I'm not turning the drone. I'm not doing any tricky flight but I'm letting the camera stay locked onto that, that object. So the drone is actually flying itself in this really nice orbit. So it gives a nice smooth orbit, a nice smooth look as it's going around that object to keep the camera locked right in that spot. And it'll keep that subject right in the center of the frame. So that's really cool. Again, you still have to pay attention to your, your piloting, your flying. You have to be able to react if you need to. But this also lets the uh, software and the technology do some work for you too if you can combine part of your manual flying skills with the automated flying skills. That way you just don't rely all on one but you also are using your manual flying skills and your practice skills. It's a nice way they come together. So now we're going to come on home and for landing. So as always if you have any questions, you, you are just starting out flying drones, you're starting out with cinematography, Right here is my email address, terry at Black Dog Drone Ops. I'm wide open to contact anytime. If you want to get deeper into it, I'm a mentor here at Romero Pictures, romeropictures.com. Mentors, book a session. We'll talk drone for a couple hours and get you going. Have a great week.